I think um, for me, because I love the narrative in uh, in uh, in in uh, traditional painting, realism, representational painting, whatever you want to call it, um, that's always been my biggest inspiration. You know, even just from looking at storybooks and illustrations as a child, and later um, reading all of the classics that were illustrated by N. C. Wyatt. Um, uh, so I have a strong love for the narrative, but um, I think traditional illustrators like uh, N.C. Wyeth, like Norman Rockwell, Howard Pyle, um, who I who I regard as masters, you know, um, they I think the role of the illustrator is to give the story in a more uh, straightforward way, but they don't always do it that way. I mean, sometimes they just depict the they illustrate the story being told, you know, because that, that's their role. They're an illustrator. Their image accompanies a novel or a story of some kind. Um, I like it, for me, I like it when there's a, a piece of the narrative is there, but there's also um, a mystery uh, uh, waiting to be investigated or solved by the viewer. Uh, or maybe it's never solved. Maybe they maybe it leaves them with the feeling of mystery. I think that's important um, to leave the viewer with with either a, a mild or strong dose of mystery to the work, even if the painter has a specific intention in mind in what they're doing and what they're what narrative they're telling. Um, uh, that's where my interest in narrative artwork falls. I think I, I think a lot about dreams and how dreams are narratives of types but um dreams are fascinating narratives because they can they can take you know a sudden left turn or they can have multiple outcomes or the narrative can change but and yet still feel cohesive with its in initial story i mean you know dreams are can be wild and crazy and and uh, a lot of people discount them you know but i think a lot of artists look at their dreams very seriously um so for me, when I make narrative paintings, I think about dreams a lot because something that I think is is true, uh, something I feel is true about dreams is that it makes sense to that this is true to me because it's it's happening in your mind, it's happening in your brain when you have a dream. Everything that happens in that dream, everybody that you encounter and interact with is really just you wearing you know, a disguise or a mask or a different outfit or cloaked in, you know, the skins of another animal or a monster. Um, and so when we make a painting, a multiple figure narrative painting, uh, we're really tapping into that flavor of a dream where we're playing all of these roles, you know, and we're looking at all these different aspects of our own persona. And then we're asking our viewer to do the same, of course. Because I don't think narrative painting is about the painter themselves. It shouldn't be. I don't think narrative painting, you know, I think we don't want to create the impression that an artist is really just narcissistic and completely in, engaged in their own neuroses, you know. I think it's important for an artist to to uh, work with all of these themes and traditions, the, the, the Jungian one, the Campbellian one, um, but to realize that there is a duty when making narrative art to always pull the audience in, to make this, make it powerful for them, you know, to say, well, let's say this painting embraces or grapples with um, issues of abandonment or, or rejection in, in some way. Uh, or, you know, maybe that leads into topics of isolation. Um, it's important for the artist to say, you know, even though they, they've experienced that themselves in their own life, to not make it a soap opera painting about the way, the exact way in which they've experienced it, but to really zoom out in the narrative and say, how can I deal with themes of rejection, isolation, abandonment? Uh, I'm just picking ones at random, right? Big human theme um, that will pull in the whole audience. Everyone that's going to look at this can find a way in to resonate with what's going on in the story in the painting or um, the characters and what they're doing in the painting to, 
to find a way to see themselves in the painting. Uh, I think for me, narrative artworks, um, really, they, they have that, um, they have that, uh, what's the word, that requirement that um, uh, they need that, that accountability to speak to the audience, to pull in the audience. And, um, you know, we don't need to give them a fully, a scripted version of what's happening in the painting. A, mis a mysterious version of what's happening is really better, you know, because it does, it, it just, it just tickles human intrigue more, but it also might leave um, openings or seats in the audience for the audience to feel, for the individual viewer to feel like they can now inhabit the, the you know, and be part of the audience, be part of the, the um or or really take part in the performance of what's happening feel like they're in there uh i i i hope i hope and strive for those feelings in my painting i'm not saying that i can do that or that i always do that i think i do it sometimes when i'm lucky uh, but i i always think about it and um and that's something i want to have happen in my paintings